Welcome back to the Out of Spec Podcast. We are joined by special guest Brian from My Tesla Weekend, which you may have heard on as far as podcasts and YouTube and lots of interesting videos and tidbits on what's happening in the Tesla world. So today we wanted to talk right about the Tesla Semi because that is, it's been news for the last five years, but it's becoming more apparent news that it is actually coming. And I think it would be a good idea to dive into the specs, the charging, the production, just everything we know about the Tesla Semi. And Brian, you've done some recent content on that. So I thought we'd kind of kick it right off with um, what do we know? <laughs> well, sure, sure. The, the, yeah, the list of what we don't know could fill a library and probably <laughs> does. What we do know, <clears throat> de deliveries are absolutely coming. December 1st, apparently. Um, is that exciting news for everyone? If you're Dave's shipping, are you going to get the one that you ordered? Probably not. We know Pepsi <laughs> ordered 100. They're, I'm going to say this year, they're probably going to take delivery of 40 to 50. Mm -hmm. So in the next couple months. You um, think that many, 40 <clears throat> or 50 just to Pepsi? Do you, is, is Tesla going to be delivering them just to test just to Pepsi first and then everyone else later? Or how does that work? Well, we don't know. Uh, but my speculation would be um, Pepsi has the infrastructure already put in place to charge them. So if you don't already have a way to charge something with a battery pack that big, it may not be the best use case for you out of the gate. So get the, if production is ramping, which we have every reason to believe it is, uh, if packs are being built and trucks are being built, get them to someone who can make the best use of them the quickest. Yeah. So yeah, they may be getting half of their order in the next two, three months and it's underway. So yeah. what, what, what else we know? The prototype uh, was roadworthy because we saw it being used for deliveries of the Model 3s during, during the ramp, during delivery hell. Uh, and then we know that it's been out for testing, <clears throat> perhaps not on the road because we haven't seen many, uh, many leaked photos, but we know it's been out in customer hands for about a year. Uh, so <clears throat> we have every reason to believe this is a finished, ready, done kind of product. So we know it's going to be tri-motor, uh, and we know, we know, I believe very, very strongly, it's being built in Nevada, because mm -hmm. that's where the batteries are. And uh, the fact that it's being built in Nevada tells you it's either using 2170s or 4680s, but Nevada doesn't have 4680 capacity yet. So I believe they were holding off on making the semi until they had the 4680s, and just, just like they were with the Plaid. And just like the plaid, they said, okay, we just got to get this thing out 2170s for now or some other form factor. The, the plaid's using the 19650s, 1860s, what is it? And, uh, but we will upgrade it later because unlike yeah. a, a structural battery pack, these just go, the modules just go in the frame rails. Yeah. So I guess we'll back up really quick. Um, for those who don't know, the, the semi was initially teased in, uh, I guess, 2016 with Master Plan Part 2 or 2. Um, and then we saw it unveiled in 2017, which was pretty cool. I mean, what was your initial reaction when you saw it unveiled? Uh, mind blown. Mind blown. <laughs> they, it, it, it just makes sense. It ticks all the boxes. Uh, and the big thing was that, you know, it, it's got to be aerodynamic. That's That's the number one key. And at the time, the price was... You know, and I still see a lot of news outlets saying it's going to be one hundred and eighty thousand. It's not going to be one hundred and eighty thousand, because at the time it had to compete with diesel big rigs, mm -hmm. and now we know it doesn't. It has to compete with electric big rigs, and the other electric big rigs out there. You've got Kenworth, Peterbilt, uh, Mac has got a garbage truck, E Cascadia, even BYD, and Nikola, and those are all in the three hundred and fifty to five hundred thousand dollar range. Why would you sell for 180? New York has an EV incentive for semis of 185,000. California has an EV semi incentive of 120,000. And then there's going to be the federal one through the uh, IRA with that big incentive. And that's going to be 40,000, I think, 60,000, yeah. something like that. So it wouldn't make sense to sell it for 180. So what we don't know, but we know is it ain't going to be 180,000. Yeah, that was a little optimistic, I think, when it came out. But yeah, you're right. The The drag coefficient was the big thing. And I think at the time they said 0.36. I don't know if that's still true, because um, that was obviously pre-production. And, and that's with like, that was without mirrors. Mm -hmm, yeah. And, and the DOT has not removed that requirement yet. 
yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But which, which could come eventually. It was nice seeing things without mirrors in Europe. It was kind of cool. Um, but again, coefficient of drag is always time surface area. So your resistance is never really based off of that. Anyway, this thing is yeah super tall. Um, okay. So many questions about this thing because <laughs> First of all, I am extremely excited on a personal level to see electric long distance hauling working or even just short distance. There's no reason to be burning diesel for a lot of the, the applications used for trucks. But the big thing with Tesla has always been, okay, we're going to share a product out to the public and then like, we don't know if it's ever going to happen or it might take years to happen. Do you really think that this December one is, is the thing? Are they really going to push for it? Absolutely. Uh, they have, they have a semi division who has been working on it and it is their job. If, if it doesn't come, what's the point of this entire division? So yes. And the fact that it looks like they've surrendered on 4680 for the short term to use the, the more traditional battery style, uh, for those who don't know, the 4680 is, its a, it, it looks like a AA battery. They all look like AA batteries, but the 4680 is fat. It looks like a D battery. I don't know if I have one handy. Nope, it's, it's not here. But I've got plastic mock-ups. But it's just a, a fat cylinder, and it's proved a little problematic in the manufacturing. And it doesn't make that much of a difference at the end of the day. You can just put more smaller cells in there or less bigger ones in. It's actually better for cooling to go with the smaller cells because you get harder, uh, or I should say, a more surface area per amount of watt hour that you're trying to cool. Uh, so that's always interesting. We don't know how the cooling system is going to work on the semi yet, what kind of charging speeds. We're, I don't think, I guess two things that could really heat up the battery pack, long grades, under wide open throttle acceleration can really heat up the battery pack and then stopping to DC fast charge at, you know, two C let's just say, but what do you expect from their cooling ability from their charging ability? What, what are you hearing? So on the, if it's, if we are starting with 2170, which I absolutely believe the cooling will be fine. We know, we know it'll be fine because you've seen the teardowns, the, the ribbons that go in between each one for cooling and for the 4680, I think it'll be fine too. Jordan Giesecke from The Limiting Factor did an excellent uh, video recently showing just how, how the cooling works with that. But you're right. If you're under, if you're at max load of 82,000 pounds, and that's another thing, by the way, I don't know if you know this, uh, the road limit is 80,000 pounds, but for EV semis, they let you go to 82,000. Did not know that. Very yeah. interesting. Yeah. So they... Um, so I'm not super worried about the cooling for the charging. I don't know if you've seen, but it is a 1.5 megawatt charger. And we know because someone saw them being installed somewhere and we just walked up to it and took a picture of the permits and all this, all the data on the side of the cabinet. So it's going to be, it's going to be a lot of juice moving awfully quick. So do we think that it's the same unit as the version four supercharger, but rather than feeding multiple stalls, it's just feeding one truck. Wow, that's that's a great theory. I had not thought of that, Kyle. I will have to, I will have to dig around and do some searching on that. Yeah, see what the case is there because the problem with version three is it does have a voltage cap, at least on the supply equipment. Um, so they could use the the mega packs uh, to you know basically buffer the grid and then charge the truck. I assume they're going to be more than four hundred volts. I'm thinking maybe eight hundred volt class of truck no reason not to if you have the charging equipment that can supply it so that's going to be really interesting to me because if semi has a higher voltage battery pack then i think we're actually going to see that transfer over to the cars and light duty stuff down the road i know we're getting more into speculation than what we know maybe we should go back to what we know can we talk about motors I've heard and we've seen the motors are mounted one on each axle through an open differential is what it looks like. Um, and are they model three motors or plaid motors or what are they using? <laughs> so, it, so the original design called for four motors, one for each of the back wheel areas. Mm -hmm. uh, but that didn't allow for any regen on the front which is where you're going to get a lot of regen. And uh, if you're going to be saving on your brakes, might as well save on all three axles. These are not going to be Model 3 motors as originally speculated. These are carbon overwrapped plaid motors. 
and they may be slightly different really? than the yes yes i have seen a photograph of a crate of them that was manufactured in nevada and i don't recall where i saw it but it was uh I I interesting interesting and uh, it was published on my channel briefly but uh i uh, had to remove it so it's uh yeah they're using these are basically, these may be what goes into the high range, high performance kind of cyber truck. These may just be plaid motors, but uh, this allows for uh, a lot more torque because they can gear them differently. Sure, of course. Well, you can always change your 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 final drive for your your tire torque output. Um, what what's the need for the carbon though? That's typically meant for high speed, unless they're really gearing these things to a low gear ratio and spinning them up to twenty thousand RPM. Uh, there doesn't seem to be a need for the carbon with, you know, without much centrifugal force. But that would be very expensive, hard to manufacture. But that would be cool, be Sandy, awesome. <laughs> Sandy Monroe says it's not as hard to manufacture as you think. I had a chance to interview him last mm, February, maybe, and we had a good chat about the carbon overwrap uh, because he had just torn down the plaid. And he said, "Now nah, people, people love to say it's complicated or difficult. It really yeah. isn't." Interesting. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's all I've ever heard is it's, it's expensive and hard to do, but of course they're putting them in plaids. There's they have no problem making them for the plaids. It seems that those are what's rolling out of the factory pretty quickly. So um, can we talk, uh, I guess, sort of towing capacity really quick. You mentioned you can get an 82,000 GVWR truck and trailer load with an EV truck, but the, if the semi itself weighs more than a combustion truck, then you wouldn't be able to put as much in the trailer. Now, granted, you are removing a, you know, in some cases, 12, 24 liter, I don't know, massive diesel engine up front and replacing that with battery packs. The motors carry very little weight. What's, what are you thinking? Are we going to have comparable loading to a combustion truck? My guess is that it's not going to be as light as a diesel truck, but there is a lot. Like you said, the engine can weigh thousands of pounds. The transmission can weigh thousands of pounds. The coolant alone on a motor like that can weigh hundreds. The, the gas tanks can weigh thousands of pounds, which gives you this unfortunate thing where when you, when you load up, you're at capacity. And when you reach your destination, you're now 3,000 pounds under. <clears throat> but uh, all, all of that counts. But my guess would be that you're going to have a penalty of probably two to 4,000 pounds. But in the original unveiling, I think uh, I, I did some research back then, and something like 85% of trucks out there are never in their lifetime loaded to capacity. Because, uh, you know, and, and that's why someone like uh, Pepsi uh, doing short hauls, but Frito Lay is one of their early customers. They ship air. Uh, yes, pretty much. Yeah, that's true. Should, <laughs> yeah, a big volume of packing peanuts. So <clears throat> there, I assume there will be a penalty. We don't know what it is. And when Elon announced the date, December 1st, everyone was like, is it going to have FSD? Is it going to have, you know, what's the weight? What's the, no answers yet. And on the FSD, it's absolutely going to have the autonomy suite because the, the objective is still to get these self-driving soon but even just for the sake of having the data it's worth it yeah pretty cool i mean overall there's a lot i think basically what we're going to see is what it boils down to is a pretty early version of the truck happening with as much hardware as they think they can throw in there to make it as future-proofed as possible trucks stay on the road a lot longer than light duty passenger vehicles do on average we see older trucks all the time driving around at least here i've seen 80s 90s trucks flat nose and they just go millions of miles and so um yeah i can't wait to see this thing come this is pretty neat the other neat thing i, I wanted to throw in before we run out of time is that the big difference i see coming is an assembly line if you look at the way even kenworth and peterbilt and mercedes are building these trucks they're still going station by station which is what i would guess the prototype line is doing but in a way that's forward looking if you i saw the uh, the other day an, a video on how airstream trailers are made and they're still hand built there's no <laughs> there's no assembly line to it and all, all i can think is these legacy dogs do not understand how much money you're going to save by putting it on a line. 
So that could potentially let them bring the cost down, not $180,000, but it could undercut what some people are expecting because of the assembly process. Right. But it, yeah, it will be really interesting to see how these are used. So I think what part of the reason Pepsi was taking some of the first ones is because Pepsi actually has the Mega Charger installed or whatever they're calling it. Um, and then Pepsi, I think they confirmed that they're going to be used on their, yeah, in a tweet, they confirmed that they're going to be used between Modesto and Sacramento, California, which is only a 75 mile one way trip, but it's a good, decent length of distance, I guess, to really figure out how they're going to work for Pepsi. So sure. no matter how many they receive, they're going to probably start getting some quick data for Tesla, but also for Pepsi to see how well they're going to work in the future. And I think the, 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 <laughs> reputation Tesla has for overpromising on range. I don't think <laughs> that's going to happen on this because you can disappoint a road tripper, but if you disappoint a shipper, you're out mm. of business. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess really quick, we can touch on that because we still don't know. Nothing's confirmed, but what it's said is that they'll have what 500 miles of range in one configuration, possibly another smaller battery with 300 miles. When I say smaller battery, we're still talking hundreds of kilowatt hours and, the and rumors... that's fully loaded too. I don't know yeah. what they're classifying as fully loaded, but that's at least <laughs> a trailer on the back. Yeah. And then their rumors are saying like a, maybe a thousand kilowatt hours, a megawatt hour of <clears throat> capacity for the, the big thing battery. Is there's, no, there's no EPA testing cycle for trucks. You know, they yeah. don't have to rate their MPGs or anything. So <laughs> Tesla's coming up with their own models to show this. If they're doing that, it means they don't have to game an EPA system. Maybe they're going after the real world, like Brian mentioned, that we're going to be seeing this. And those numbers are Elon saying at max gross vehicle weight at highway speed. Of course, what does that mean exactly? But um, basically, the idea is 80% of truck routes are 250 miles. And so the 500 mile range is in theory, this lets you get to your destination and back round trip. Of course, with trucks, an ideal situation is charging at both ends of the delivery, which Kyle, we saw in Germany or in Austria at the Graz factory, their little electric truck charging at both ends, just right. topping up a little bit. <laughs> yeah, just little top ups throughout the whole thing. But I think, uh, you know, we're, we're really coming down to like, okay, electric trucks certainly are here. It's not just Tesla. Freightliner has theirs. Volvo has theirs. Mercedes has theirs. Of course, that's part of Freightliner. But um okay, it's not going to work for every application, but there's enough applications where it is going to work today that they won't be able to build enough of them, in my opinion. I agree. Yeah, yeah there, and there, and yeah, the demand is insatiable at this point. And as the, the batteries are only getting cheaper, the production methods are getting cheaper. And I think the, the whole point of this massive delay, apart from the lockdown and all that, in, is getting it, dialed all the way in so when it goes into production it can just go 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 yep that's what they need you know the help they can get i mean it's delayed three years granted there was covid and everything but that's i guess that's kind of normal timeline for tesla we'll, uh, we're taking bets on how long the new roadster is going to be delayed what's but, your um, guess <laughs> i don't know it's still my dream car and i'm like i know <laughs> eventually they gave too like many away <laughs> the, the backlog of I've already got the money on most of the orders and the rest of them I have to give away for free. Where's my incentive? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately. So we'll see. I I'm fascinated by the electric trucking industry that is up and coming. Um, let us know in the comments, if you want to see another video kind of looking at all the different electric semis that are coming out, it's a whole other episode we can dive into, but Brian, it was really great to have you on and uh, looking Thanks, forward Jordan. to sharing more with you in the future. Yeah. Looking forward to it.